Hello everybody, and welcome back. I'm Count Christo, and this is Black Ice. It has been a long time since we delved into Black Ice in Hearts of Iron 4. It's been a long time since I've played Hearts of Iron 4 for any particular length of time. I've missed it. There have been some cool updates uh, since I last played, and Black Ice, the test version at least, has been updated to support the logistics system. So, we're going to have a go here as the United Kingdom, and more generally, hopefully, eventually, as the British Commonwealth, because we are going to seek to go down, encourage colonial elite, all this good stuff. Imperial Federation is the goal. If you're a long-time viewer of the channel, you will remember that we did do this before in vanilla, and I had a great time doing it. I thought it made for a really interesting, enjoyable campaign. So let's see if we can now do it in black ice. You will notice that some things are already set up in this campaign. I've already started doing my research and things like that. That's because I spent an hour just reading and looking at stuff. Uh, I'm going to make, upload that as a separate video rather than as episode one of this series because I think you guys probably want me to get into it. I've also built myself a spreadsheet which will tell me how much... How many factories we need to assign to various different things in various different situations. Let me just make sure I have loaded the correct save. So, what's Black Ice? It's basically Hoi4, but more complicated. Um, they've got new factories, they've got new... Um, all kinds of stuff. Um, new equipment, loads of new equipment, uh, new... Um, components of divisions, new brigades, new support brigades, all kinds of stuff. They've got new music, I'm pretty sure. Um, there's new graphics. You design tanks the same way you design ships in No Step Back, like a fully-fledged tank designer, which is pretty cool. There's tons of new technology. There's all kinds of good stuff. And, of course, lots of reworked focus trees and all of that good stuff. So once it actually loads us back in here, we will kick it off. There's also storage of um, of resources, which is interesting, as well as uh, yeah, as well as new factories. We've got vehicle factories, uniform factories, uh, shipyards, all that kind of thing, as well, and tank and air production capacity, um, which is interesting. So you can't just put the number of factories you have onto tanks. You have to also have relevant production capacity. Okay, so, step one, obviously, is to pick a political direction. What the hell is this? <laughs> okay, so I spent like an hour reading everything in the previous episode. At no point did I click this button, which I just misclicked when trying to click on this. Holy hell. Um, what on earth is this? Okay, so, we are conservatives, which means we get... Sorry, conservatives more specifically classical liberalism. No, conservatism. We are conservative, which is classical liberalism. Okay, yeah, classical liberalism is like the class of, of ideology, and this is our name for it, conservatism. Okay, fine. Wait, no, the other way around? Anyway, not important. We can... Can we change these? Why is this one glowing? Oh, okay, these are subcategories of conservatism so we are classical liberalism which gives us less political power but more production efficiency and production efficiency growth the republican party is a whole different thing donald Towit is a whole different thing okay and there's different like categories within each of these okay and lots of them in authoritarian because they kind of use that to cover all kinds of different stuff and then fascism has all kinds of different stuff within it that's cool, okay. And then what is this? What are these dots? <laughs> these are members of the political party and members of the party in government. Okay, cool. I don't know why that matters. This is a really cool UI though. Props to the team. But anyway, we were talking about um, picking a political direction. So the objective, Imperial Federation. It's definitely going to be the objective. We're going to push towards that, which should be fun. It's going to be hard, but that's the eventual goal. Germany might, you know, do some stuff in the meantime, but the main goal <laughs> is Imperial Federation. In order to accomplish that, we're going to go for home defense. We don't want to, we don't want to 
get involved in appeasement, other people's problems, home defense. But right now we're gonna get Encourage Colonial Elite and then rush this tech slot. And then we're gonna get this tech slot. Um, we should be good. And we also need to grant some Indian autonomy so we can hold the Imperial Conference. Because I think once you've held the Imperial Conference, you get some ticking autonomy reduction on your, uh, your subjects, which is good. So now, bear with me. We're going to set up some military factories. So we have... I'm not actually going to pull the spreadsheet up. I'll show you it later, maybe. But we have 35 military factories. Now, how do we want to allocate our factories? Like what should be used for... Um, what should we use for planes? What should we use for tanks? What should we use for, for infantry? I think, honestly, ships we've already set up. They're just going to produce the ships they got currently constructed and then we'll worry about it, basically, is the plan there. In terms of tanks, we've got a light Mark V. I think we should not make any, not build light Mark Vs. We should just build some cruisers instead, basically, because these have... Yeah, much worse stats on them. And I think even even these might be too bad to build. Maybe we should wait and get this better turret. Although these turrets look very similar. No, it is Mark II. What's the difference? It's slightly more expensive. Oh, goody. <laughs> okay, it doesn't reduce your speed by as much. It's basically the only difference I can see there. Okay. But yeah, we might actually wait to build these, which have yeah, just a little bit more reliability. Because um, I think these early tanks, I don't know, we're not going to get much use out of them. I mean, historically speaking, for example, the one I heard about recently, like Germany's invasion of France. They used a lot of really rubbish, very old tanks. So maybe, maybe we could do similar. But yeah, I feel like we don't have a use for tanks urgently, right? So I think we should wait. So I'm going to assign 0% of my factories to start with to tanks. Uh, and then, so it's basically between how much basic infantry do we want, we want to deploy, how much garrison do we want to deploy, and then we'll pick like what garrison we're actually going to build. And then aircraft and how much towards just logistics. So I think, let's put, let's put, a very small... I mean, the thing is, garrisons... What are these guys? Infantry, light infantry. So you, you have to have NATO symbols on the map, basically, I think. Or can you change it here? You can change that, but can you change... Can you change this? Okay, yeah, you have to use NATO symbols on the map. Fine. But we could not use NATO symbols in the template. Would it be easier to see if this was not... Not these symbols. They have made the non-NATO symbols prettier. Oh, hang on. That did make some of the... Like, some of these are not inf not NATO symbols. That is kind of ugly. Hmm. But this is kind of... These are kind of nice symbols, right? I think we will stick with... Uh, we'll stick with NATO symbols. It gives it a different feel to vanilla apart from anything else. But yeah, so basically, I want to pick a garrison. And what am I going to use this garrison for? Essentially, just holding ports. That's more or less it. Um, if there's any actual fighting to be done, you should have infantry divisions there. Um, so they should have some artillery. Do we need, like, a fortress garrison that costs 1,200? These guys are quite a bit cheaper. And they've got some heavy artillery in the backups. Yeah. I think... I think, actually, for now... Hmm, I'm debating between deploying no garrisons to start with or going, like, a little bit hard on garrisons to start with. Because we're not going to have... We're not going to have as easy a time moving garrisons around the world as we will with, uh, you know, once the war kicks off. Obviously, that's rather forward-looking of me to think about that right now, but... I think... Yeah, and then the other question is, how much of our production do we want to dedicate towards aircraft? And right now, I've got that set at 20%. So, 65% infantry, 10% garrisons, 5% logistics, and 20% aircraft. I think that's about right. Maybe we should bump that to... 
Yeah, about 20% aircraft. So we've got seven, seven factories to play with on aircraft. Uh, we don't want to build outdated CAS. So let's scrap those. Let's think about what we do want to build. I think close air support is not that important really early on. Like this, because this this is rubbish, right? Compared to like battle cast, if we were to build that once we invented it. It costs 50% more. And it has much better agility, much better air defense, much better range. And yeah, better max speed. Ground attack is like double. Yeah, we shouldn't be building these. Now, how about fighters? Because these don't have to be long range. Compared to the gladiate, the hurricanes rather, which are what we're going to use, are they any good? They're barely cheaper. Barely cheaper. They have an air attack that's, I mean, worse, but not astonishingly worse. Yes, priority is a bit worse. Yeah, I think scimitar fighters. And then... Right now, I think what little aircraft production we have should basically be on scimitar fighters. What are what are these guys for? Are you a naval attack craft? Amphibious aircraft used for scouting and attacking enemy fleets. They're vulnerable to interception. Okay. How do you how do you compare to a swordfish? You're more expensive in terms of material. Um, worse naval attack. Yeah. They have longer range, though. Much more service manpower. How's your air defense? Oh, swordfish air defense is way better. Yeah, we're going to need swordfishes. So I think what aircraft production we do have now, maybe recon would be the thing to do with it. Thing is, they don't have the range. I think I'm just going to put it all on scimitars, honestly. Well, not all, actually, because we should make some carrier fighters. Yeah, it's true, actually. We should work out what are we actually using on our carriers right now. We're using Ospreys and Blackburn Sharks are the fighters and carrier bombers that we're using right now. So, let's make some of them. Osprey carrier fighters. Osprey... What was it? Carrier Sharks? Shark carrier bombers. Okay. So, those are our... Those are our... Um, yeah, our guys for our CVs. <clears throat> and we should build at least some of them basically all the time. And then if we pull these guys down. Um, I'd like to swap what you're making. Yeah, I think these casts are just not good enough yet. So let's just make scimitar fighters instead. And demon fighters. Actually, should I switch you over? Yeah, let's do it that way. And then... What did I say? Seven factories I've got for this, yeah. That puts us into the negative on this. But we're only one short. Minus 30%, still pretty bad. Okay, so I guess actually for now we're limited by air production capacity rather than anything else. So I'll take that off and uh, and we'll leave that in, in surplus. Seems good. Okay, so that's our that's our planes for now. We've used six on that. Let's actually adjust. Let me adjust my spreadsheet so it actually reflects the idea that we're going to use six. six aircraft it's like 17.25 percent or so and then we can use like 67 67.2 uh, percent on infantry cool okay so that's planes next logistics so logistics uses trains and heavy trucks and it only uses heavy trucks when you actually get in here on the supply thing and say, like, I want you to motorize this uh, this hub, right? When you motorize, it uses specifically um, heavy trucks and quite a lot of them. Um, so for our uh, for our production, uh, sorry, our, our logistics allocation, which should probably be a top priority thing at all times, actually. We've got two factories assigned to that right now, with 5% of our total factory base. So I guess 
one on factories. Sorry, trains, and one on heavy trucks. And we'll just put them all right at the top, basically. And we'll keep them there um, so that they always get the equipment that they need uh, to make sure we can keep producing them. And there they go, little trains. <laughs> um, I don't know if that'll be enough, obviously. We'll, we'll find out, I guess, basically. And then for our... For our infantry, you know what? I will actually, I will actually show you this uh, this spreadsheet real quick. Boom, boom. So don't get too freaked out by this, but this is the spreadsheet that uh, calculates how much uh, how much stuff we have. And uh, I am just going to format format this as a table real quick. Um. So if we sort it by the number of factories we need, we can see that we need four factories on infantry equipment, four on heavy transport, four on field uniforms, and so on. But this is actually more factories than we have. So what I'm going to do is first just try and get things roughly in this order. So heavy transport trucks. Wait, is that how I want to do it? No, I think we should probably organize stuff in a kind of semi-logical way. Like, let's put all our artillery together. And it's worth doing this kind of setup now, I think, so that we can more easily understand, like, find where stuff is later. Tilly, by the way, is the... Um, does it show you on the expanded? No, it doesn't. That's annoying. Oh, no, it does. Okay. So this is, this is light vehicles, in case you're wondering, like, what the heck is an Austin 10? Um, anyway, let me, uh, let me hide this again so we can... Focus on the game. So, yeah, radio equipment's kind of a basic need, isn't it? And then we have our, yeah, our various guns. Recon equipment is kind of a, a basic one. And then horse transport should go with the other transports. Okay, cool. So we're looking for four on infantry equipment. And support equipment. Just two on that, yeah. Garrison equipment. All right, so we don't need garrison equipment for this, but we will for... For garrisons, obviously. Uh, so I'll put that down at the bottom. We can deal with that next. <clears throat> so, field uniform. We need four on those. If we're if we're building a lot of... Yeah, but see, we're almost... Yeah, I think actually I'm going to go down a bit on field uniforms. Because I always seem to have more field uniforms than I need. Or at least I did when I played this last, like, two years ago. <laughs> One on radio equipment. Uh, recon. Two on recon, apparently. Uh, what are you? Transport trucks. Probably need quite a few of those. Not that many, actually. Just two. And then you are heavy transport trucks. We already have one for the... I probably need a bunch on this. I can't afford to put four on that. Uh, light anti-tank. Just one for motorcycle. Have we got motorcycles in production? I should also be told, like, what am I missing? Yeah, motorcycle and cavalry equipment. <clears throat> so where, where are my motorcycles at? Am I crazy? I don't see motorcycles. Is it because they're somehow outdated? No. Oh, we haven't, we haven't invented motorcycles yet, but somehow I'm still missing them for garrisons okay but we also do need yeah cavalry equipment is something we do need because we have some cavalry recon there it is good cavalry equipment we just need one i actually don't need cavalry equipment for my infantry divisions okay i thought we did i thought we had cavalry recon in there but put that here sure oh, actually no that should go with the recon equipment um Okay, that's more or less right. As we get a few more, yeah, we actually need two on artillery prime movers, really, ideally. So, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll set them to the correct ratios now that we've got it set up so they're all producing, and then we can um, we can let it just fill out basically as we get some more infantry. Uh, the 18-inch is the heavy artillery. We need three on that. 
support equipment needs two, light artillery needs two. I'm pretty sure the 18 pounder is our light artillery. <clears throat> and then I think that's it. Yeah, support equipment needs two, field equipment, heavy transport trucks needs four. We should put to three, so I might as well put that back up. No, actually, yeah, all the way up. Okay. Radio, light vehicles, mortar teams. Yeah, I think the rest is uh, is pretty much right. Okay, cool. So we'll let that produce what we need. Um, and I guess we just kind of... Yeah, I think we just produce infantry for now, basically. We have quite a few of these, like, territorial divisions at home. But the other thing I'm going to let happen is just some of our... Like, I'm not actually going to deploy any men right out of the gate. I'm just going to let some of our deficits get worked down, basically, I think. Although, no, I don't need to do that. Just make reinforcements high priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then heavy trucks. This is how many heavy trucks do you want to apportion towards logistics rather than deployment, I guess. Um, and operations are high priority. Garrisons are medium priority. And we only deploy if we have spare, basically, is what I'm wanting to do. And we will probably tweak this infantry division, but obviously we can't right now. It's got no army experience. Oh, hang on. I don't appear to be able to deploy any units. I guess you have to unpause before you can deploy stuff. Cool. All right, well. Yeah, and outdated is just because we have some ships that are outdated in production. Uh, okay. Unpause. Rock and roll. Let's do it. Speed four. Uh, no one has any orders right now, but that's okay. We have exactly one tank regiment, I think. This is, this is all of our tanks. How many have we got? <laughs> 23 armored cars. And 30 tanks. Oh, no, sorry. 90 tanks in the whole British army. <laughs> oh, yes. And we set some stuff up, by the way, so a bunch of countries don't do anything. Just to make the game run a bit better. Uh, yeah, and we're also upgrading our cryptology department so we can break uh, the German cipher easier. There aren't any decisions we need to take immediately. Uh, there we go. Our experience has set itself up. Can I actually deploy units now? Ah, this is how you add them to the deployment queue. Okay, cool. Has that moved or am I crazy? Deploy. Well, it shows you how many men you need to fully deploy, how many men are currently in training. That's cool. And yeah, we don't have enough equipment because those deficits as ever are lying to you and they're much higher than they initially start out as. Cool. Fuel stockpile is gaining pretty rapidly. Uh, we should probably gather up our navy, shouldn't we? Um, just so we can <clears throat> we can organize things better. Let's have those guys merge up. League of Nations. Italy strongly condemned for using chemical weapons in Ethiopia. As a response to Ethiopian appeals, League of Nations condemned the Italian invasion. Will the League act? We lose five political power. Okay. Um... We have quite a few men deployed over in India. How many men is this? Ooh, we can sort by all kinds of things. Pre preparedness by warning. What? Oh, that's just like the alert. What's preparedness? Oh, like plan preparation level. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> sort by name, by fuel, by status, and by army. Cool. I think we are going to build a pretty motorized army. I'm expecting to be able to, to retain enough fuel for uh, for a lot of the war. Now the Navy has merged up. We can see the the high, high power of Home Command. Where are you guys based? How do I... Not in, dropped in Gibraltar. Part of Home Command's docked in Gibraltar. That doesn't seem, doesn't seem necessary. Oh, we have some men down here holding Gibraltar as well. Cool. That's enough! Uh, no, sorry, the fleet. Let's have you guys... I think, yeah, I think the fleet should all head home, honestly. Um, no, no, I merged them the wrong way around. Whoops. You have to is it select these guys first, and then merge them up. Yeah. So right now we just have one theater of ships. Do we... I'm not totally convinced... I want to fight a battle for the Atlantic at sea. You, do you know what I mean? Because, I mean, lots of, obviously, 
France is going to fall. Anyway, I shouldn't, I shouldn't worry about this yet. Let's, let's, let's organize the Navy later. The thing is just when I get full on fuel, where are you guys going? No, come here. Base yourself here. Okay. No, you guys come here. When I get full on fuel, I'm probably going to want to exercise the Navy to get uh, naval experience is what I'm thinking. But yeah, I think we won't worry about that just yet. Let's worry about what the heck Germany's up to. Getting our getting our national focuses through. Kingdom of Italy abandons their naval treaty. We lose 50 political power. It's a shame. So the escalator clause is invoked, which means it's not as bad to be in the treaties as it used to be. In 600 days. <laughs> and the Empire of Japan abandons it. We lose yet more political power. That is a shame. Is there any advantage to being in it? No. It's basically just kind of mutually assured things are a bit less good for you. Uh, we are losing 0.3 uh, war support every month. Sorry, every week, I think, which is not great. Um, yeah, we don't need Commonwealth ties yet. But I would like to do some of these developments. But yeah, I'm going to rush. I am going to rush industrial research because I think tech slots are really important. George dies, which is obviously bad because he was a good guy. I mean, you know, for our country at the moment in terms of stability gain. So we get this guy as well, Edward. Uh-oh. And he is a member of the monarchist party. That's not great. Civil programs ongoing. Um, what is this button? Oh, uh, yeah, we can. What? Ah, that's cool. Um, so you can introduce equipment. So previously, when you played Black Eyes, when you invented something like sniper rifles, suddenly every infantry guy in the world was like, ah, I don't have a sniper rifle, and became less combat effective. Now you manually introduce them, which is very cool. I like that. Um, so I think I will introduce radio equipment into, that's interesting, support battalions, but then it adds it into all division HQs, which is not, you know, a support battalion. Interesting. Well, we don't have enough radios to do that right now, so I'm not going to do it, but in the future, we will uh, we'll certainly want to be having a go at that. Now, ideally for exercises, we only want to be exercising ships that are a bit more reliable. So let's let's split off the subs. Because subs in my limited experience tend not to be very reliable. And let's decide, yeah, our subs are gonna be based out of Edinburgh, I think. And they can be Yeah, their own thing. These icons are pretty cool, but I don't know. I'd kind of rather have the old ones back. <laughs> That's okay. Civil programs. Oh, we can't do this yet. Anyway. Okay. Well, we're going to keep going down here. More war support as well. Cool. Just because we're trying to beeline, as I say, those, uh, those tech slots. Decisions we can take. Stop. Diplomatic efforts. No, I don't want to do that. Could increase funding to League of Nations. Make everyone like us more. Did that, is that 25 forever? It seems, seems powerful. How do I tell who's a member of the League of Nations? It's not a national spirit. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what's this? Ah, oh, this is our newly deployed guys, I guess. Have them go and join the main fleet over here. Seems good. Which should actually really be based out of London. And yeah, you can immediately see the impact having those guys at sea has on our fuel. It's pretty crazy. Oh, hang on. What's this? 2%, 0%. Is that how much I've made, maybe? I mean, the 0%. New decision available. Grow rubber plantations in Nigeria. Could be good. Um... How much of the resources am I getting here? 
70, 73%. It's pretty good. And it's only going to increase. What's my, my likely situation on rubber? We do have tons, but that's basically all Malaya, which I fully expect to lose. Oh no, sorry, that's not Malaya, because Malaya is a, uh, a territory. Which means I don't actually automatically get their their stuff. So where is my where's my rubber production I actually own? Is it in Okay, there's some here. Right, I can see it here, can't I? Uh Ah, oh, okay, we have rights to it in Singapore and uh and things like that. Okay. So where how do I see that? Is there a way of seeing the fact that I have access to it here? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Is there a way of seeing how much of it, though? Hmm. I guess the fact that if my flag's above it, basically I get full rights to it is, is what that means, because I can't seem to see like, what portion of that I have what I, I, is mine and what portion of that they get to keep. Uh, yeah, so we're not going to do that just yet, because I think there's probably going to be better things to spend our, our political power on in the short term. I haven't really picked any law changes I want to make. What we might do, though, is uh, bring in some guys. Yeah, civilian factory, railway infrastructure. He seems like a good guy. Good guy to bring in. Maxwell. Quartermaster General. Ooh, 15% infrastructure construction. That's pretty good. Armaments organizer. Maximum equipment factory up. That's interesting. English communists. Communists outside the Soviet Union are fixated on attempts have been made to destroy the socialist revolution. Communist party says the trials in Moscow rent have sent a new triumph. We love Stalin. We lose stability. Ouch. Oh, our stability is not currently trending up or down. Ah, the Winter Olympics helped out a bit. New decision. Right, yes, so because of the unequal treaties and the, the Nine Powers Treaty, we can do all kinds of things to exploit, it looks like, all of the different countries of China. And what do they do? So they have, like, certain percent chances to cause all these different things. So we can get foreign road building and all this kind of thing. And we get light protest by whoever we do it against. These do seem pretty good, although 30, I don't know. I think we're not going to do them yet. I think I'd rather spend the political power on something else. <clears throat> I mean, don't get me wrong, some of them are good, but they're only for 75 days. And uh, yeah, I mean, 10% more production efficiency cap is okay, but I mean, the cap doesn't really matter too much. And growth, 2% is not much, is it? Construction speed, 2,500 fuel. I mean, that's nothing. That's less than our daily gain. So, the Unations moves its venue. Who cares? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the whole fleet. Like, do I want to... Do I want to just send the whole fleet out to train? The pride of the fleet is less likely to get into an accident. This is a chance to damage ships. They will not gain experience once they reach the regular level. So, really... <clears throat> how much fuel is this going to use if I exercise the whole navy it's actually less than my daily gain in fuel that this uses wow you guys not really going for it huh how much uh yeah they're not getting much experience from it i guess the time is going pretty slowly yeah i guess i mean if it's not going to use up all that fuel let's just do it with like all our big fleets and see see how damage they get basically <clears throat> excuse me You guys head out to see. We should also set up some leaders here because they might reduce the odds of uh, of accidents. A career officer, spotter, and a superior tactician. Who better to command the Mediterranean fleet? And you, I mean, just the best one, basically. He has all the traits, right? Chief of Navy role, aviation doctrine. Oh, yeah, right. You can promote people to be chief of the Navy, can't you? I forgot about that. It's a cool mechanic. Where are you guys? The America and West Indies fleet. 
you guys, I think, should rally up out of uh, Sierra Leone and merge up and get a commander who's good at, yeah, exactly, spotting. And your goal is to prevent any uh, German ships from raiding our supply lines to uh, to the east in the event that we have to divert them from the Mediterranean, which I fully expect. And then we have the Far East Command, which should merge up and rally at Singapore. We must resist the Rhineland. Yeah, we'll do a small protest. A blockade runner. Yes, that's exactly what we need because we're expecting. We talked about this a bit in the like the episode zero. I'm expecting to have to give ground to the Japanese Navy. I don't think we can go toe to toe. And then what are you? All right, sorry, you're the Far East Command. <clears throat> Let's put them in new theaters because yeah, it makes more sense, right? This is the East. You guys are going to be the. Uh, you're basically the South Atlantic. <clears throat> and then these guys are the home. Well, actually, no, one of them's home, but you guys are... Uh, can I move these? Yeah, good. You're the med. We should keep some ships in the med. See what we can do against the, uh, the Italians. New decisions available. We can do some war propaganda. Right, so we did these, which are like raise, they raise stability. I would like it if we could get stability up quite a bit, and I think it's good to take the hit early. So, yeah, focus on people's problems. Weak stability plus one for 70 days, so we get seven stability out of this for 50 political power. I think that's worth it. Oh, yeah, and then preliminary war propaganda. <clears throat> we should do that. Wow, well done, Norway. Industrial program's done. Gives us a civilian factory. Give me two more civilian factories. And we can recruit an operative. Okay, who do we want? Uh, tough. Control trade effects. Rescue artist. Sorry, escape artist. A double agent. Agent has been turned from the enemy to our service. Well, of course, we should get this double agent who is both Yugoslavian, British, and German, which means he's extra good running against the Germans. And then, yeah, just start building a spy network in uh, central Germany, I guess. And we'll see, we'll see how he does. No longer under the effects of winter heating, that's good, it's going to give us some more factories. <clears throat> building a bit of infrastructure first, and then just going straight into civvy, civvy factories, basically. Right, I never actually set... You guys ended up docking in Singapore? Good. You guys can train as well, and you guys can train as well. And yeah, we're not not—we're just not training the submarines. Which means I should probably split them out. Assign them as, uh, as such. You got any subs? Yeah. You guys get the logo. Don't train the subs. Subs have very bad reliability. That's why I don't want them to train. And then we'll just see after a little while. Like we're getting some naval experience, but how much how many of my factories are going to end up getting dedicated to repairs is the question. Game's running really badly compared to vanilla, but you know, that's often just the price you pay in these mods. And given that there are you know more decision decisions to be made, you know, per minute. It doesn't really feel like they're actually running worse. Um, looks like we're, you know, producing okay on things. Obviously, because we start with unequal production amounts, it's it looks like we suddenly have horrible deficits and my my ratios are all off. But um, I think yeah, trying to crank our stability early on seems good because then from then on, because you'll get you know constant running party support and all that kind of thing. So let's let's try and push for really high stability early on but now we should probably try and make some changes so uh we can't go early mode not till 15 percent world tension 
which right now I'm still not totally convinced if we're at zero or four. I imagine four. But, uh, oh, that was loud. <laughs> um, do I want to put more stuff in here? We'll have them decrypted in, we'll have them decrypted by the war, basically. And then I'm not sure I'm going to reveal intel. I've mentioned this before, but I kind of feel like it's usually better to just leave it. Um, let's get some... Yeah, let's spend the cash, you know, the 10 Civ Factories now, to get the extra two um, spies. Because I want to be able to actually do run some missions against Germany, see if we can like infiltrate their various different administrations, so I can start getting our uh, our intel up. And then the other thing I was considering doing was censoring the press. It would cost us... Well, we can't censor the press. We can regulate it, first off. It would cost us 1% Civ factories. Um, Churchill is upset. Germany is of no concern. No problem. Plus one stability. Are you worried? I'm not worried. And yeah, the naval conference is going to time out. We're not going to be able to draw from it. That's fine. Still just the outlander class. Ah, equipment required for division reinforcements. Desert warfare equipment, armored cars, motorcycle, and light tank. Um, we are making light cars, I thought. No? Looks like not. What needs armored cars? Don't have any of these. So what is this territorial division? How does it differ from an infantry division? It's not motorized. It has a lot less artillery in it. And it has some light infantry as well as normal infantry. Okay. Um, and the African division presumably has some, yes, desert support companies, which are what are taking the desert warfare equipment. Well, we are going to need some African divisions, obviously, to uh, try and defend Egypt, basically. And all being well push across and uh, and take control of the whole of North Africa so we probably should add I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a whole new spreadsheet for them but I think we will add the creation of some desert warfare equipment I think that's the only um, like specialized equipment that we actually urgently need Let's make some of that. And then armored cars. What's using armored cars? Probably the tanks. Yeah, armored cars. But we only have one tank brigade, don't we? I honestly think we should delete the tank brigade because it's it's so far from what we're actually going to want to use. Is it even any good? It's got two whole armor. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's disband the tank division. We'll, we'll redeploy them later, but for now... You don't need tanks. Still need some armored cars. Or oh, is it for garrisons? No, for division reinforcement. Right, there's our two... Excuse me? It's meant to give me two extra. Oh, it was right. In two places. Two more civilian factories. Keep them coming. Um, I mean, obviously, once the research is done, we can we could invent some... Oh, who could have done? Cool. Um, what was I thinking? Right, yeah, I wanted to check how many... Uh, still no still no things being used for repair. Although, actually, now I think about it. Is that because nothing's damaged, or is it because nothing's splitting off to repair? Nothing seems damaged yet. Okay, that's good. I mean, we do need the naval experience for, for lots of things. Second naval conference, that's fine. Do we want to do preliminary war propaganda? Or election campaign? Two stability is not very good. Two base just doesn't seem doesn't seem quite worth it. Uh, lose political power. We do kind of need to not let our war support just slide down and down, though. So... Yeah, let's do... Let's do this. Try and get our war support slight, starting to come up. Um, anything else we should be doing right now? I don't think so. 
Construction one. Okay. Tech time. So we should almost certainly do something like quality control. Ah, oh, darn. Looks like some of the Commonwealth went this way. Uh, although, do I want this? Anti-air. Fort construction. Not that useful. Resource gain is pretty good. It's nice that we've got some of our some of our you know Commonwealth lot have done them ahead of us, so we're going to get bonuses. I think production efficiency growth is pretty important, especially in vice. It's a lot harder to come by, but uh, yeah, we'll go for that. Okay, finished building that infrastructure in London. Right, so. That's finished building. And we established, we think, it's just mathematically not really worth building them. More infrastructure in other places around here. So we'll just uh, we'll just keep building basic sieves. And uh, hope for the best on that for now. And yeah, London Conference is timing out. That's fine. We're still gaining fuel at an alarming rate. Um, I think I am going to... I don't want to pull the planes off the uh, the carriers. I don't think selecting them like this does that. But I do want to... Uh, we'll centralize the air force, basically. And then we can... Uh, we can worry about where to send them. Yeah, they're coming out of the airport, not off the fleet. Good. Uh, anywhere else we have planes? Doesn't seem like it. We stick any any of bases over here. Okay. Have you guys can all gather up to Sussex. Cool. And then we can yeah we can decide where to put them. <clears throat> uh, yeah, on productions. So on the production side, I don't know, I'm not feeling the need to build, like, storage to hold stuff for now. I think that's mostly a thing that's uh, more helpful for the Germans in there. Because we already basically have, like, international autarky. Just because we have so much within our empire, basically. You guys can all merge up, and then we'll send you... We'll split them up a bit so they're not overstacking the airbase. Oh, and they've actually split up the air regions here quite a bit. That's interesting. We can have these guys do some exercises. Ooh, cool new models. And, uh, yeah. Ooh, there's the fairy swordfish. I didn't realise... <laughs> this was a carrier bomber. It does say unit type carrier bomber, I admit. <laughs> but it actually didn't quite notice that. Okay. Uh, so I should probably replace the... What are we making, the current carrier bombers? Oh, I guess they're in here somewhere. Because, yeah, they outdate the shark carrier bomber. Okay. Um don't have any air experience right now, so I guess we're just going to do a straight one-to-one -one upgrade. But, uh... It's these ones, right? No, that's a scimitar fighter. Swordfish carrier bomber, there we go. Make you lose nine days of production. That's okay. Ten a year! That is not very many. We have 29? What? Why do I suddenly have so much... Ooh, allied anger. You get more political power, more research speed and stuff, basically because the Germans have been doing naughty stuff. Cool. Why do I suddenly have so much... Um, so much air production capacity? I suppose I shouldn't question it, really. Um, let's put one more on the swordfish. Because the swordfish, I mean, it's the old reliable, right? They're useful. Let's cut down on something and then put it straight back up. Like, for example... What is this here? Transport trucks. We'll, we will need them, obviously. Oh, I didn't go to the right thing. 
uh, these matadors. Let's take one of those off. Make me, yeah. Let's put planes. They're not the top priority, but obviously, I think the the air force is going to be fairly decisive. I don't know if you know much about World War Two, <laughs> but I think that should be good. Um. Okay, bit more research. So more planes. Um. Well, we could go ahead of time. <clears throat> excuse me. On the hurricane. And we do want to go for the Hurricane, not the Gloucester Gladiator, I think. It's much faster in the air. It's a bit less agile, but barely. Way more air defense. Same expense. I'm tempted to go ahead of time, but I think we should probably not. We should probably go for starting to get some doctrine done with our, uh, with our Air Force slot. Now, what I want to make sure I know is how many... How many planes am I losing to these exercises? I'm not getting very much air experience. Oh, 0.048. Oh, I think you get, I think it's probably because a lot of them are green. I think you get a lot less air experience when they're green. Can you see? Um, yes. Okay, so in the last, you know, day, we've lost, we are losing some planes, but not very many. Is that going to be worth it? All right, industrial efforts done. Construct the Inchin Down. Inchin Down? What is that word? Officially called Inchin Down. In Down. Royal Navy fuel tanks, also known as the In Invergordon Oil Fuel Depot. This complex will consist of six tanks. It gives us. Scottish Highlands, two fuel silos and a naval base. And adds tech, fuel storage level two. Hmm. Free tech is always nice. How how hard is, is fuel storage level two to research? What is this? This one. Fuel capacity plus five percent. Hmm. Well I would like to be able to store more fuel. Um even though it feels like we're we kind of overflowing it right now. Once Malaya and stuff falls, we are gonna be in a worse spot, we have to import it. But first, industrial research. Get that extra research slot done ASAP. Uh, don't want to do region-wide industrial integration. That's fine. The heat wave of 1936. Fine. So should I worry about the number of planes we're losing to accidents? It's weird to me how when you put it on days, it shows you the values, and you put it on months, they vanish. Like, surely they must, you know... All still be there on the months. There's our large diesel engines invented for ships. Now, what else am I gonna want to put on? Heavy torpedoes, submarine torpedoes. I'm not sure we're a heavy torpedo needing kind of kind of fleet. <clears throat> I think instead we should invent the interwar sub. Because I'm going to want to use subs to uh, try and mess with the Germans a bit. The French Popular Front wins the election. They have begun rearmament. The Socialists will seek to rapidly rearm the French military instead of focusing on the economy and political stability. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we are losing some fighters, some planes here. I don't have that many. Are we getting more experience now they're a bit more experienced? No, we're not really. I'm not sure this is worth it for this tiny level of experience gain. So let's uh, let's stand down the uh, let's stand down the air training. Um what's this new decision that we can do? Ah, oh, train the workforce. Right, so this actually did seem good. <clears throat> Cuz 3% research speed, not that bad. And 5% stability, 5% war support? That's a lot. And base, base stability can go higher than 100, I believe. So you do kind of create a buffer above 100. Could be wrong about that, actually. But... And yeah, the production efficiency growth, 10%, for 90 days would be nice just to kind of get up towards the production of all these new new things I added. Mm. Actually, but actually, no. We should probably... 
I don't know, it could be good, but I want to get up towards being able to um, change some laws. So we're at Civil Liberties first. We could go to Minor Restrictions, but I like the civility from Civil Liberties first. I think we're going to stick with that. We can handle fighting off some, some foreign spies and things. That's okay. Can't lower the bracket, so no, no real point changing this. <clears throat> right, we could go to Basic Bonds already. Which gives you factory output, military factory and construction speed for 270 days. Okay, so no real reason to do that. Because the lowest one actually gives you higher civilian factory construction speed. Then we're a reserve army. Going to a standing army. It gives... We get more XP gain. Is the main reason I think about doing this. Because... Is, is it just naval XP gain? Yeah. So we'd lose 1% factory and dockyard output and 1% building recovery speed. But we'd get an extra 25%. Guatemala draws from the League of Nations, don't do that. We'd get an extra 25%, well, from minus 50 from mi to, to minus 25. It's not quite the same as minus, 20, plus 25% rather. Um, what, do we, what do we just invent? What just happened? I was, I was I needed to change something and now I forgot what it was. Bollocks. <laughs> I can't remember what, what just happened. <laughs> um we should actually prioritize garrisons as well. <clears throat> Maybe actually over reinforcements. It's really important to keep your garrisons full. Oh yeah, by the way, I don't think I've actually shown you. There's this tab here which shows you the strength of your army. And the bigger your army, I think the faster you can research doctrines. Yeah, so massive navy gives us much faster doctrine research speed and faster naval research speed, which is cool. I like that idea. You know, having a big navy makes it easier to exercise and work out, you know, naval stuff. Makes sense, right? Um, yeah, I think I am actually going to go to a standing army. Well, 3% political power. No, we're getting we're getting okay amounts of naval experience. Let's not do that. We're currently cooperative. Is our is our foreign policy stance, which gives us five percent more defensive war stability. What if we went to interventionalism? It lets us justify war goals faster and sooner, but nothing really else. Neutral. Yeah, I don't think that really makes much much difference to us. We're currently on medium standards. I'm happy. Well, actually, do you want to go to high standards? Slower division training time is not really a problem to me. <clears throat> you get 2% more division experience gain, which I assume is, is additive to something, because otherwise 2% is kind of meaningless. Mm, I don't know. It's probably okay. Let's just consider these could regulate foreign investors. It would give me worse everything, but more stability and more political power. No, that's terrible. But encouraging it for worse stability, I could ta I could afford the, the loss of stability and less political power in exchange for 2% more production, more construction speed, we do get some more opposition party support, but right now we're getting conservative ticking up. I think we, I think yeah, let's encourage, let's encourage foreign investors as our first major political act. <clears throat> Weekly change of stability is negative now, but it's really high. So, and yeah, industrial research coming in, nice. Da 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 coming through with the construction. Yeah, we should also consider, like, does it make sense to do any of these early? I don't think so. Ah, free dockyards, eh? Right, so it's finished pumping out a bunch of those ships. You guys were meant to be here. There's industrial research done. Good, just gives us that extra slot up in Yorkshire. Um, probably time to rush down to Commonwealth Knowledge then, just considering 
This one requires an enemy country. Okay. And then this, two fuel silos. I know we are on full fuel, which, you know, having played Hoy 3 a bit, I want to export the fuel. I want to sell it for money, but that ain't a thing in, uh, in this game. Let's do... I mean, I do want to do these. I mean, we're... we're what the fuck must be two? More than 3%? Ah, oh, right, the 3% is doing that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think we should rush towards Commonwealth Knowledge. Plus, getting the factories earlier in our... In our vassals and allies and all that stuff is, is also useful so new slot which can do electronics and industry okay probably going to throw it into electronics honestly i wouldn't mind the political power right now and being able to give us daily political power gain Ooh, yeah let's do that let's invent the radio get some get some radios in every home talking about what a brilliant leader we are um yeah nothing nothing repairing yet it's interesting um, so what do we want to build? Do I want to try and design a new ship now? That's the question. I think, yeah, let's design a new ship. And that will be the final act of this episode. Oh, what time is it now? Oh, it's already nine. Okay, never mind. This episode's going to go for a bit. Not, not 20 minutes or so. Let's design a destroyer. That's what I think we're going to be short on. We're going to be short on destroyers to find and kill German submarines. So first off... Uh, we're only interested in... Because there's escorts, dis torpedo boats, destroyers, and light, cru light cruisers. Okay, I'm interested in destroyers. And right now we have the improved and the early destroyer. And if I'm not mistaken, and I will check... Ah, oh, right, I can't... Uh, can't even look at it from the other wrong one. Improved is the one we want. Okay. And we have some pretty good hydrophone and early sonar stuff already invented. Good. Okay, so, sorry, wrong button. We are after destroyers. And we're going to take a look at these two. What have you got? These seem like very mixed, very screen-based destroyers. You know, they've got a bunch of torpedoes and things. What I think I want is an anti-sub destroyer. Anti-sub warfare. Yeah, that's what we want. So let's design one. <clears throat> and also, should we have short-range and long-range anti-sub destroyers, do you think? We probably should. What is the difference between these, by the way? The, the GH class and the Leander class, or Leader class, rather. The GH class has another turret. Is that it? That is it. Oh, and a bigger, a bigger, bigger engine. Okay. So we're basing it. Well, actually, let's, let's make it, let's make it fresh. This one costs 6 50 And it basically, I think it just needs. I'm, I'm not expecting this to have to fight enemy surface vessels, basically. We can't put any radar on it. We need some anti-sub warfare. Yeah. Deck deck throwers. That's what we want. And then it will need some improved AA fire control. Yeah, for sure. Because the German German planes could be a problem. A fire control system though. I'm not completely convinced it needs a really good fire control system. Are these strict upgrades? Yes. Okay. Just costs more. Well, do we want this? I'm not convinced we do, you know. Because it's a big cost increase. I mean, right now, look at this thing. It's cheap as hell. Okay, we do need to give it... Oh, that's all we can put on it. Okay. Improved hull form. So, for an engine. Now, I think it wants... These need to be relatively long range, right? Because I need to be able to fight longer range German subs up here and, and down here and stuff. But that's more of a problem when the German submarines develop later on. If this is an early war, 
one. I think we probably still go with diesel engine. Oh, it does use a bit more fuel. What about an, a steam turbine? Well, let's compare them. If we put... I mean, how fast are we trying to make this bad boy? How fast are the German submarines going to be? That's the problem. I don't know. Can I see in the intel... Like, what can I see on the, the naval intel ledger? When do I get to know stuff? Okay. 30, we get to see approximate ship classes. Approximate task force count in naval ports. Okay, I mean, that could be really useful. If we can get it up to 80, we get to see the ship variants. I'm going to... Yeah, I think my early game focus, my early game spy focus, I want to know about the German fleet. <clears throat> I know that Air Force is important, obviously. But I want to know... I want to know about their fleet. I want to know how good their subs are so that I can counter them exactly without overspending. That's my theory. We'll see if it works. So, as we were saying, we want a rack and thrower. We want some anti-aircraft guns. We need some anti-aircraft guns. Well, these are cheap as hell, probably because they're not very good. 0.5 seems, seems real bad. Can I get bait? Okay, yeah, okay, heavy anti-aircraft guns. What am I getting here? 0. 0.7 for 14. 0. 0.7 for 14 versus 0. 0.5 for 9. Yeah, okay, so the other one is better. This is a... These are all actually anti-air slots. I don't know how many depth charges I need. But the idea of this ship is just to... It doesn't need to go very far because it's... Well, they will be bumming around. The fuel thing, right? They don't actually have a level of fuel, do they? I can't remember. Like, the range... Well, I'm thinking about the range like we're playing Aurora 4X. Like, if they have a 5,000 range, does that mean they can go 2,500 and then 2,500 back? It just means they can operate within 5,000 miles of their base, I think. So damage control, we need some, yeah, as good damage control as you can get on it. We want some really good sonar. That actually increases your depth charges by a percentage. Okay, that makes sense. So you can spot them. Main battery. Now here, I want to keep it cheap. Let's, we're going to put a mixed anti uh, battery. And we're going to put a, a, yeah, a high angle battery for some anti-air. A four gun. And how many inch do we want? Well, let, let's compare it. Why can't I save this? Oh, it lacks necessary things. Fair enough. Uh, piercing is averaged out. Yeah, we just get better anti-air basically when you go higher. It's less reliable though. I think, yeah, some good, some good high angle batteries. They're not very good at hitting targets on like other ships. But they've got some fairly good piercing. So they're not terrible. And then anti-air fire control needs to be as good as it can be. Fire control. It only really affects light attack. Because we're not putting torpedoes. This is not designed to be a screen. This is an anti-sub ship. Now, this just increases health. It shouldn't be taking many hits, but I mean, the thing is, with this much health, I don't know how linear the, the damage is, but let's say it took one hit from a cruiser submarine, like one that I had, torpedo attack of 27, it would not quite kill it. If it took two, it would definitely kill it, even if we give it good subdivisions. Oh, no, okay, not quite killing it actually requires the third level of subdivision. Okay. Oh, these cost nothing. What? That seems, just, that seems weird. Subdividing ships costs something, <laughs> trust me. But yeah, I don't think it needs a fire control system. Do you get bang? I can't remember. Do you get bang for your buck 
better on lower cost ones. We're getting 0 0.2, 0 0.2 for four. Yes. Wait, no. <laughs> this is 0 0.1 per two. And this is more than that, actually. Yeah, so you actually, you should go with better submachine guns. Sorry, uh, anti-air guns. I think this is enough depth charge damage. And yeah, it's it's not much cheaper than the existing Leander, but it's so much better at killing subs. We've got a depth charge, like, triple. More than triple. And sub detection higher. Not quite double. Well, I thought I thought our sub detection was better than that. Has something lowered our sub detection? Hmm. Anyway, um, so the engine. Yeah, I'm just torn on the engine because I don't know. I think diesels are designed for smaller ships, so let's let's just kind of roll with that. Um, and how fast do we need it to be? Well, we need it to outpace their submarines, don't we? So if we're looking at my cruiser submarines, which are probably the fastest ones, they have a speed of 18 knots, these guys. Actually, that's not what I should be thinking. I should be thinking I have to be able to outpace the German heavy cruisers. So my heavy cruisers have a top speed of 31, and that's the best intel I have right now on what the Germans might be. So we need to outpace the German heavy cruisers at 31 knots. I think that's going to lead to me putting a freaking massive <laughs> blooming engine on this bad boy. Um... Yeah, because I need to be able to outrun. Well, let's see. If we put 30,000 on it, we're using 2.2 .2 fuel to go 31.9 knots. What if I put a steam turbine engine of equivalent size? What did I say? 35. Hang on, go, go back. What do we got? Yeah, 30,000. 30, and if we go with an equivalent one, we can go faster for more fuel, worse sub detection, worse reliability, more supply use. Cheaper though. I think we need the sub detection really high. I'm tempted though. Right, well, well, let's let's keep comparing. So that's... I don't like this because it's worsening my sub-detection, but what about if we went with steam expansion engine? Oh, no, these are, these are like Stone Age technology. Okay. What about a steam turbine engine? Is that is that just worse again? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's not even as much cheaper. Okay, so I think we'll... Yeah, we'll go with diesel <clears throat> for the sub-detection. But I think we have to go with 35... Which now suddenly it's barely cheaper than the Leander. And it's range. Oh damn, I can't actually quite afford this. I'm gonna unpause. Um, <clears throat> this model is expensive to refit, though it can be changed to a shorter version for only moderate cost. Okay, well, I think for early fighting the Germans, early. We only need, well, this is actually cranking speed as well, so we can probably, yeah, let's go with a medium, mm, yeah, medium cruising radius. And then make the diesel engine a bit smaller. Yeah, just to cheapen it up a bit, lower its fuel use. Okay, maybe this is a stupidly large fuel engine, no, uh, engine, sorry, fuel engine, diesel engine. I don't know. Um, Italy takes Addis Ababa. But I think this is what I want. It's very, very, you know, single-minded, this design. This is in anticipation of some serious German activity. Lacks one or more required modules. Fire control system. Oh, fire control system of some type is required. 
damn, that pushes it over into more expensive than I can afford. Oh, I see why that's required, because it lowers the uh, it lowers the anti-air. I didn't notice that these actually affected anti-air as well. Well, we'll get the we'll get the second one because that doesn't lower anti-air, and then we'll have to take off one. Um, one turret, one anti-air turret. Okay, so this is... No, don't change that. This is the... Uh, how, do I, how do I name this thing? Well, let's save it first, don't worry about it. Okay, so here it is, the Destroyer Improved MK-10. It's 38, it's quite a bit faster. Oh no, it's actually slow. <laughs> slower than the Leander, but it's faster than I think the enemy surface ships are likely to be. So it should be able to run away. What's its the surface detection? It shouldn't be that good, that high, because it's not got any guns. Yeah, it's less visible. And its sub-detection is, uh, is really good. Okay, so let me... Where do I name it? Here, okay. This is a... Uh, this is the 1936 anti-sub warfare ship and we will give it the anti-sub warfare logo boom give me some of those cool uh okay cool so we'll get those in production and i'll actually i'd like how many so let's, yeah let's put you know 20 percent of our production capacity of ships onto those and then tell me once tell me once you've done that basically more civilian factories coming out at best pace did i get that second operative recruited yet no no upgrade in progress why can i get three all of a sudden oh just from the number of upgrades okay um yeah i think i will do this again get another operative slot going Costs me. Costs me on the civvy factories. Don't worry, I know. But I think it should be worth it. Alright. More of these going into production now. Let's keep the uh, fleets merged up. Why are you not exercising? Ah, oh, right, because I merged them up again. Yeah, let's keep them exercising. I need the XP so I can keep designing new guys. Can I turn off news alerts? <laughs> I can't, I can't say I care much. So I want to spend some stability to get more research speed. The refuge to German and French, uh, Italian scientists. I mean, earlier we do it, the longer it has to, to pay off. So maybe I should. But... No, I don't know what it is. It's like playing a E4 World Conquest. Playing these games... Playing Hoi always makes me feel like I haven't got enough time, I haven't got enough time. I need to press on, I haven't got enough time. Um, so to do this we need development in Canada, New Zealand and the Raj. Okay, so let's do the Raj first. And we've got a new free slot because we finished something. Uh, it's not 38 yet. Let's get... Hey, what happened to my bonuses? I had 20% bonus on this a second ago. Uh, production efficiency cap of 4% is pretty crazy. So... Ooh, so is consuming good factories. Oh, so much of this is so good. Let's go hard on these. I think we, we need those urgently. I really like the system of locking certain research slots to certain techs. It makes, I feel like it, it reduces your choices in a way to make them more strategic, if that makes any sense. The cruiser chassis has been invented. We will, I don't know why it's scrolled wrong, by the way. Like, we can't see the ones right at the top. It's weird. But this is the new, the new one. And we will need to design a tank, but I actually think we don't make any of these tanks. I think we wait. I think we get some more some more techs before we start building tanks. 
Um, in the meantime, better scout cars. Oh, this guy can do artillery as well. Okay, yeah, let's upgrade our uh, let's upgrade our heavy artillery. Start producing the the better heavy artillery, because otherwise, right at the beginning, you just put all of your points into like well, at least I do. Maybe it's dumb, but into uh, industry and <laughs> sorry, electronics and things like that, which I don't know. It seems a bit less interesting. And obviously, you know, it's voluntary, but it feels like it's the optimal way to do it. So Twelve naval experience, free dockyards again. Well, I don't actually have the dockyard, the the experience yet to, to do what I wanted. Although, actually, we probably do. Why don't we just? Well, first off. The difference between these is just that this one has more guns, right? Yeah, it has one more gun and a bigger engine. And it's a bit more expensive, but for quite a bit more uh, more oomph. So we're actually going to decommission these. And the Leander class, I'm just going to upgrade. <clears throat> so for example, yeah, stick a anti-aircraft fire control system on it. Well, actually... It barely has any anti-air, so does that really make sense? It's got minesweeping gear. I'd rather have a dedicated minesweeper, I think, than just have some on everything. So take that off. Makes it quite a bit cheaper. 50 cheaper. And instead, throw on a rack thrower. I know these aren't our anti-sub guys, but they still need racks throwers, I think. And then some good big torpedoes to get really crank that torpedo attack. Yeah, it's expensive. And then better subdivision. Which obviously we're not going to refit them into this class. The old ones will stay as they are. Medium to long. It's not got a very good range, does it? Ah, oh, it's got the steam turbine engine. Interesting. Is this the good sonar? No, stick the stick the good sonar. In fact, um, I'm just considering: should this be a new class, like rather than changing the Leander? <clears throat> yeah, I think it should actually. <clears throat> So we'll make a variant. These are radar modules, save as new. Right, okay, so the upgrade to the Leander I want to make is to boost, to replace its, replace its sub thrower, sorry, it's a mine sweeper with a, a, a thing, a thrower. <laughs> In fact, replace this one with a thing and replace its mine warfare thing with uh, an AA gun instead. Yeah, and then that's the refit. And then also throw on... Yeah, also throw on the AA fire control. <clears throat> and some more machine guns. They're, they're not very expensive. They're really not. Yeah, throw on some more machine guns. Scare off the Luftwaffe a bit. How expensive is it to refit the fire control? Quite. That's a, that's a huge increase in, in, in the fire it can put out. Yeah, okay, so that's the that's the refit. Oh, which I don't actually have enough experience for again. So we'll refit the Leanders to this, but then we'll also design a, a better Leander. <clears throat> so I haven't even looked at like, the main battery and stuff. We're just going to assume that's okay. So there's the new Leander. Um, so we'll have to yeah go in here and say... Hey, have I got any Leanders in here? I thought I did. DD, Destroyer, VW class, VW class, EF class, Amazon class, AV class. I swear I built some Leanders, didn't I? There's one. Okay, it's the GH Leander class. So you uh, refit to neither of those. Ah, oh, right. When is it? 
there's a thing about when it's compatible and when it's not. Oh, it just renamed it by mistake. Okay. So this is the... <clears throat> this is the leader class. MK2. Okay, so you get refit to the leader class MK2. It's only going to cost 345, not too bad. And look at those stat improvements. Yeah, better torpedo, better depth charge, better anti-air. Uses less fuel even. Nice. Do that. And you split off. How do I? Yeah, new task force. You are a sub, so go into the subs. And split off these subs that I accidentally joined into the main fleet. And merge them into this one. Look who's on pause there, I have indeed. So you're upgrading. So the GH class. There must be some in here. Cruiser Leander class, that's what I keep wanting to say. AV class, AV class, VW class. Although actually, now I look at it, like how much would it cost for you to get fitted into this? Okay, 2,000. Not happening. <laughs> it's like a whole new ship. EF leader class? Jeep. Okay. So you split out. Let me... Uh, what have I done? What'd I do? Where are these guys? What have I just done? Ah, I split them. Okay, that's not what I meant to do. You guys, go back in here. And then go... Ah, I can't do that, can you? You guys come out and go back in. Okay. What I meant to do is just say... Hey leader class ships like you you're the one that's cheap right yeah so you go to a new task force okay just so i can keep them separate we're looking for destroyer mark two leader classes gh gh again those are escorts leader class cheap not cheap. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll just think about it going forwards. Um, but yeah, you stop your training. Get yourself upgraded. Throw yourself into this uh, task force here. Okay, good. So there's two of those being upgraded, the ones we already built. And three dockyards can now build the new and improved leader class. Good. We will put two on that. And next we need to do some... Um, and these are, yeah, these are fairly all round, but these are, you know, ship of the line DDs. Okay. Ooh, concentrated industry one. You'd love to see it. Press on. I'm tempted. Yeah, press on to concentrate industry two ahead of time. The 15% factory output is just so strong. Okay, and I'm going to call it an end to part one there. Thank you so much for watching, Ruby. It's been a great pleasure. In the next episodes, we will continue to uh, align the Royal Navy with my new vision to try and build up a reserve of planes, work on actually assigning some orders to these troops we have spread around the world, and start working towards our political goals of the Imperial Conference. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.